Hello, Dorks Nerds, Geeks, and Gamers. It's your host, Ghost here, and today we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be, this is a brand new episode of Dorks in Movie Minute. We're going to be talking about Star Wars Visions, episodes 7, 8, and 9, the very end of the series. Uh, hopefully it finishes off strong, as strong as the middle section was of the series. Um, if you guys haven't seen that, check out what I thought of the middle part of the series and the second part of this three-part uh, review. Uh, starting off with episode 7, this is The Elder. Um, this one, I have to say, had the best action scenes of the series. Uh, but other than that, it was a slow slog, um, and also the animation style was the least interesting to me personally of the whole anthology. Uh, it was kind of Jojo Bizarre Adventure kind of style, art style, but it wasn't as detailed, uh, so it was kind of more bland and flat. Uh, but other than that, this is about a Jedi and his Padawan. They are going to the Outer Rim uh, because this Jedi is known to uh, be familiar with the Outer Rim and he visits us often. Uh, but this time he's actually taking his Padawan with him. Uh, and it's very cool because we hardly ever see the Outer Rim in Star Wars at all, ever. Uh, so it's very cool that we actually get to see a little bit of these planets and what's going on there. Uh, we end up landing on this peaceful planet because they feel a disturbance in the Force and space. Um, and they feel that the best course of action is to land and to reassess their situation and see uh, if this planet was maybe where the disturbance came from and if they can take care of it and move on with their day or whatever. Uh, so they land on this peaceful planet. The people tell them that this elder landed as well um, and he ran off into the mountains and they don't know if they should chase him or not uh, because they don't know if he's a Sith or a Jedi because of the disturbance that they felt. <clears throat> so on the planet they end up splitting up. The Padawan goes to the mountains while the um, the Jedi Master goes towards the ship that was found on the planet uh, that the Elder left. Uh, they find out the Jedi Master ends up calling the Padawan and telling them that it is a Sith ship, so be aware that it is a Sith, uh, the, supposedly, that they know of. Um, so then the Padawan becomes upon a dead uh, animal in his path. He gets attacked by the Elder, who shows up in front of him, who is indeed a Sith. Uh, but he explains he's not actually a Sith, he's a Sith defector. Um, he actually was a Sith, but then turned against them, and now is just a murderous, rampaging monster. Um, so then they end up fighting him. The Padawan ends up getting uh, hurt pretty badly in the first round. Uh, the Master then comes to save the Padawan. The Master then also almost loses. The Padawan throws his uh, lightsaber at the Elder, uh, thus giving him the Master enough time to stick his lightsaber right up to the Elder's chest and turn it on, uh, shooting it through his back. Uh, very cool action scenes, a lot of like, the Elder has these dual dagger lightsabers you hardly see, a lot of cool new weapons, you also see the Outer Rim, a little bit more of it, the, uh, the more peaceful lands of Star Wars. Uh, so overall, a pretty good episode. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Like I said, it was more action heavy uh, with a more bland art style I did not enjoy. But the action scenes take the art style up a notch with the grayscale uh, and the energy shots. And they definitely do take it up a notch in those action scenes. That's why it's an, I'm not giving it a 6 or a 5. That's why I'm going to give it a solid 7. Uh, but yeah, that's my thoughts on The Elder, Episode 7. Uh, but Episode 8, we're moving on. This is Hop and Ocho. Uh, i got to tell you guys, this is my favorite episode of the whole anthology completely. This is a 10 out of 10 episode. This is a perfectly uh, written episode. It's a longer episode, but it tells a complete story from start to finish. Um, and it still feels completely Star Wars, while also feeling like its own complete unique story. Uh, this is Hop and Ocho. It is about two sisters. Uh, one is a slave who is a uh, humanoid bunny kind of creature. Um, and the other two, an Ocho. Hop is a slave. Lop is a slave. A uh, humanoid bunny creature with a collar on. Ocho is a humanoid, is a human daughter uh, to her father who is this rich kind of uh, Jedi master. Um, so they end up uh, running into Lop when she's a little girl, her and Ocho, they become friends, and the father ends up adopting her and getting her out of slavery. Uh, so these two girls grow up and they become close as sisters. Uh, that's when Ocho decides to join the Republic and turn against her father because she has different opposing um, uh, views on what the Republic is and they're trying to help them or not. Uh, so she ends up joining them, breaking her father's heart and Lop's heart. Uh, the father ends up teaching Lop the ways of the Force and get, passing down the lightsaber that their family had for generations, um, and thus telling her that she needs to either take care of her sister or her sister, you know, is going to take care of her. Either way, they're family, so they got to deal with this. Um, and he kind of leaves on his own accord uh, to to uh, take on Ocho. Uh, so then Lop and uh, her father confront Ocho. Ocho ends up taking her father's other good eye because he only has one good eye because he was in many duels before that. Um, and at that point, Lop loses it. She ends up fighting her sister Ocho, and there's an amazing, uh, you know, good, evil, Sith, Jedi battle uh, between the Force and that Force, and you can see the darkness taking Ocho, um, and you can see the light side helping Lop. 
Um, and in the end, the lap ends up winning uh, over her sister, and they kind of and there's no happy ending. Uh, she ends up kind of winning, and her sister flies away and goes her own separate way. And there's no happy ending. There's no uh, resolution to the story. And I like that a lot because that's a really Star Wars theme to have. Um, that's what it's all about. Because Star Wars was made about war, the horrors of war, and that's that's really all what it's about. Uh, so this is a perfect 10 out of 10 episode, beautiful animation. Um, I don't even have an animation style to compare it to because it's so unique. Um, and the, the creature designs, the droid designs, the action scenes, um, just everything, the details, everything on the episode is extremely beautiful. Uh, perfect episode for Star Wars Visions, at least that's my opinion. Uh, but we still have one more episode to go before this series is over with. Uh, so let's talk about episode 9. Um, and I'm going to pronounce the name on this one completely wrong, I already know, uh, because it's so weird. Uh, but it's Akakiri, uh, but it's got a very, it's a very heavy metal st style, art style, if you've ever seen the heavy metal movies from like the 80s or 90s, I believe. Uh, it's also got a music video kind of style, um, hand-drawn art style, and it's also got a weird Roman-esque style uh, with some of the characters in the end, the uh, Sith Lord in the end. Uh, but this one's about a Jedi who is with this group of people, and he's with this princess, and he keeps having visions of seeing someone getting killed over and over again. Uh, so he's trying to protect this princess who he's been protecting since she was a little girl. Uh, so he's been there by her side this whole time she's grown up. Uh, they're very close on this journey, but there, there's a lot of action between bandits, them fighting bandits, and kind of going along their way. It also felt very Samurai uh, Jack-esque in the very end. It felt very, uh, kind of like that. Uh, but it very leads up to the end. They're trying to get back to this castle to get the princess back for being exiled for whatever reason. Uh, we end up finding out that the, the king's sister has t taken over the realm and kind of forced the princess out. Um, and in rage, the Jedi attacks all her guards. Uh, but the the um, the ant had put a helmet on the princess, so the Jedi had killed her on accident, not knowing that she was not a clone trooper. Um, so this that enrages him, and he begs for the Sith Lord to bring her back to life, because we know the Sith have the power to do that, if willing, if they want to, but they're bad, so usually they don't. Uh, she agrees to if this Jedi decides to become a Sith in return, and uh, he has nothing else to, to gain or lose, so he says yes. And he does give up his uh, power as a Jedi to become a Sith Lord. The princess comes back to life, and she tells them, are you ready to leave? Let's go, let's get out of here, let's stop her and leave. And he says no, he's a Sith Lord now, and he walks away, and his lightsaber turns red. And that is the end of that episode. Uh, this is also a very strong Star Wars themed episode, uh, between the light and dark side and some of the sacrifices they have to make uh, between Jedi and Sith and the fine line it takes between being a, Sith, a Jedi and a Sith um, and kind of what you accept uh, because the Sith don't accept death while the Jedi do uh, so it also reinforces those themes as well uh, so this one I give a solid 9 out of 10 a great way to end this anthology series um, I really hope we get a season 2 and more episodes of these uh, Star Wars anime style projects um, and I would love to see more studios on board as well uh, so I'm very excited to see what the future has for Star Wars Visions uh, that was my thoughts on these last three episodes. Let me know down below what you guys think. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And as always, guys, keep it right here on Dorkston. I've been your host, Ghost. Adios.